के वे लाइफ हाई थैंक हाई हाई अभिषेक आर मैनर्स थैंक यू फॉर ज्वाइनिंग अस हेलो एवरीबॉडी सो जस्ट अ क्विक इंट्रोडक्शन माय नेम हाई एवरीबॉडी Hi, my name is Manan Puri, and I am the co-founder of Strategy for GMAT. Uh, it's a end-to-end B-school admissions consulting venture where we start off with the GMAT strategy, but leading up to the application preparation, to the interviews, and post MBA uh, journey as well. Uh, today we have with us two ISB alums, uh, Manas Arora, who is also from the class of 2013, like me, and Abhishek Chawla, who is from the class of 2016. Today we will Hi, focus on. today we will focus on the interview preparation their journey what things you should focus on between the call and the interview uh, date and between interview date and d day uh, in terms of preparation what should be the mindset etc etc we have received a list of questions prior we will cover them and you can use the comment section to ask your questions which we will pick up during the session uh my own interview journey you can see it in the description of this video you can take a look at it later uh for now let me ask abhishek to introduce himself uh thanks manan hi everyone uh, my name is abhishek chapla uh, i work with uh, one of the big four strategy consulting firms and i also work with uh, s4g to help and mentor people uh, get into the b schools of their choice and i look forward to interacting with all of you Thank you, Abhishek. Manas. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Manas Arora. I also happen to be working with one of the big four consulting companies in the Middle Eastern and North Africa region, and uh, I work with Strategy for GMAT as one of their consultants to help you guys with uh, with your admissions process. Uh, so, look forward to interacting with you on this forum. Thank you. thank you manas and uh, specifically manas is based in dubai so it's a working day for him unlike us in india so thank you specifically for joining us today so uh, let me start okay. by asking you guys about your own journey in terms of how did you prepare for the interview and what was the interview experience so uh, manas why don't you go first sure uh, so manan prior to uh... applying for my mba i uh, had about 4 years of work experience uh, spread between almost equally between uh, uh, i banking and uh, and uh, financial consulting uh, so that was a was a background that i was carrying uh, when i went into the interview uh, i had some inst- interesting instances to share um, some some of the projects that i had worked on which i was particularly proud of and i had mentioned them in my in my application as well Uh, i think my interview panel had two people uh, one of them was from the admissions committee the other one was an alum um the the obviously it started with some some brief introductions after that they were quite curious about the projects that i worked on uh, as as you might be aware the the setup of a consulting uh, and and uh, investment banking um corporation is that the junior staff don't get as much exposure and that's where i was at at that point in time so the projects that i had spoken about they were quite curious about uh, what is it that that was exactly my contribution in those projects because you have teams that you put together and they usually contain people across the hierarchy and obviously the people carrying more experience sort of drive the projects so they wanted to know when i am mentioning that the team managed to achieve x or y what exactly was my contribution and how did i enable that so it was a, a congenial conversation they were they were uh, um, as i said just curious more than more than anything so they didn't want to uh, cross me or or put me in a in a corner that was not at all the situation and uh, that somewhere came out when we closed off with a with a pretty nice conversation about about football and and the fact that after the interview i was anyway slotted to go for a football match um so yeah that that was uh, that was the conversation and as i said uh, not by any means something i can call stressful uh but yes it was conversational they were precise in their questions um and i was fortunately uh, prepared enough to be able to respond to what they were exactly asking thank you manas that sounds like a well prepared interview and hence it sort of went well and obviously you were fortunate enough to have panelists who didn't grill you that much and like in my case uh, so abhishek uh, <laughs> you can talk about your journey now 
Uh, sure, Manan. So uh, I think in my case also, it was uh, pretty similar to Manas. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a bit more background to uh, you know help understand what I went through. So uh, my interview was on a Saturday morning, 10 a.m. So it was the first slot of the day. And uh, because of that, I was a little nervous because I thought, you know, they'll come out all guns blazing the first interview of the day. They might grill me too much, you know, thinking that, you know, they'll be fresh, that they'll expect me to be coming hard as well. So probably, you know, I was expecting a stress interview, but uh, it did not go that way. Uh, the panel had three people, all alums. Uh, and somehow to me, it felt that they had decided uh, amongst themselves that who's going to lead the interview and who would take a backseat or you know would be more of a person who will just observe and not ask too many questions. Uh, it may be uh, rehearsed or it may not be, but but that's the impression I got. Uh, in terms of the questions, I uh, I think it was majorly CV based. They they went deeper into my experience and and my uh, motivations to go for an MBA and why ISB uh, was a school of my choice. Uh, one of the questions was on my significant or the most significant achievement till date. And because I had spoken at length about my work, I specifically asked them if I could talk about something that's outside of work. And they were happy to uh, you know, listen to me on what I had to uh, say, anything you know, that, that's not uh, a CADS or work. And I think that gave me an opportunity to showcase uh, a well-rounded profile than somebody who's just focused on a CADS or, or, or experience. Uh, overall, it went for 20 minutes. Uh, I was a bit surprised when, you know, uh, uh, around 20 minutes of time, they asked me if I had any questions for them. And that's usually the last question of uh, for the candidate. Uh, but because uh, it went fairly well, there were no major hiccups and it ended in 20 minutes or so. I was pretty confident of my chances. But overall, it was not stressful at all. They were very, very, uh, you know, cooperative and, and looking forward to what I had to say. And I think that's what I have seen over the years, uh, you know, helping people, understanding how their experiences have been. That, you know, ISB's alum community is generally pretty forthcoming. You know, they want to help people to give them that adequate opportunity to describe their experience better and, you know, uh, showcase their skills and experiences in, in, the, in the manner they want so that they can assess them better in the interview stage to take a final call. Thank you, Abhishek. Uh, now, this year specifically, the wait is a little longer uh, for people because ISB has asked uh, the candidates to submit their GMAT scores or GRE scores by the 31st of October. So the wait is a lot longer. There is a lack of a pattern, uh, as at least I see it. I'm sure there's a method behind the madness, but there is a lack of pattern. So uh, Abhishek, in terms of preparation till the time you get an interview call, from the time you submit your application, how you should go about it, what are the things we should focus on and uh, look for during this period? So what happens uh, in the case of ISB and many other B schools as well is that you'll only get five to seven days before the actual interview. So, you know, the call might come on a Monday or Tuesday and you have your interview on a Saturday or a Sunday. So you do not have much time. Therefore, it's very important to get a head start versus uh, the competition because at the interview stage, it's you know it's a funnel. So uh, if if thousands of people are applying, only the best get that interview call. And amongst the interviewers, uh, amongst the interviews, you know there's a uh, threes to one ratio. So if three people appear for the interview, only one makes the cut to uh, to ISP. So it's very important to get that head start. And how you can do that is some of the frequently asked questions like you know why mba why isb career goals those are some questions that you can definitely anticipate and prepare well for them uh, also you know prepare well on your cv like manas and i mentioned uh, a lot of the questions will come from your experience and, and your cv uh, as well so uh, you need to be very very thorough with what you're going to say on each and every line of your cv you know that that makes a lot of difference because if you've written something on your cv and you're not able to back it up then the, you know there is that question mark on whatever you have claimed in your story and your essays will you actually be able to demonstrate those skills or traits while you are at school so i think those are certain questions which will definitely 
uh, be a part of your interview or are you know very likely to be a part of your interview and therefore you can get a head start by preparing well for them i think uh, during that phase that 5 to 7 day window you can take as many mocks as possible i would recommend say in a 5 day window take at least 3 mocks and uh, take them with alums uh, that's what i did and i think that made a lot of difference i still remember uh, the first mock that i took with one of the uh, alums he was from 2009 class of 2009 uh, he grilled me so much that you know at the end of the interview he told me boss aise to nahi hoga isp mein you really have to pull up your socks and that was an eye opener because to me uh, having done all that prep and uh, you know being very thorough with my cv with my story etc and even then if an alum is telling me that you know this is not good enough that gives you a sense of the bar that isb is, you know has it's, it's so high that you cannot slip up on any any uh, point whatsoever so i think that's very important you know uh, get that head start prepare well on on your cv and the frequently asked questions and take as many mocks as possible with alums if if that's possible so that you get uh, you know a, a, an an insider's view of what what will go well you know what will fly with the interviewers and what not thank you abhishek uh, manas you do want to talk about your thoughts on yeah. from the time you get an interview invite to the d day one obviously is taking as many mocks as possible yeah. uh, what else should one do of course i think i also had uh, something to add to what abhishek uh, mentioned and this goes back to what we said uh, in our intros and and when we explained our interview experiences um is that when we say that the isb uh, admissions panel and the alumni panel who are conducting these interviews they are congenial and they give you space and opportunity and usually unless they have some very specific reason they won't usually stress you out during interviews it doesn't uh, imply that uh, the bar in any manner is 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 easy to uh, to cross so that's what abhishek mentioned that the bar is is quite high and this feedback came to him uh um, because he was speaking to someone and then seeking a formal feedback so i think uh, you might still have a very congenial and a very good uh, discussion but it can't be ignored that the competition and the people that you are competing against they have set the bar quite high so unless you are able to represent your case well um, and put up a tight story uh, in terms of why an mba why right now and what's the plan after that and what you bring to the table when you come to the classroom if if that is not set tight uh, it it can lead to um, uh, you know lead to uh, undesirable outcomes during an interview and that's where what abhishek said becomes becomes quite important that uh, once you get the call uh, obviously prior to the call you have done your preparation you have studied your application you have looked at your cv you have uh, prepared your thoughts behind it but when that call comes knocking it's very important that uh, that you actually go ahead and have those conversations in as uh, uh, close a simulation as possible and that is where mocks uh, uh, come in quite handy and conversations with alums uh, becomes useful because usually that is the case you will find uh, alums sitting on the interview panel um, one challenge that this brings um, is that the these these uh, panelists come from various backgrounds so for example i do not come from um, an understanding of of uh, any kind of engineering be it mechanical be it uh, computer sciences um, or or other fields energy or anything like that so if there is a candidate who uh, comes to me for a discussion uh, as against say someone who has that kind of a background um, then the conversation and the nature of of that conversation is is vastly different um, and and as as the person who's going into that interview you have to be prepared uh, to explain the details and the technicalities of what you did based on the question as well as being able to i don't want to use terms like dumb it down but basically explain to it uh, as as something which is non technical and present it as a genuine business problem which required uh, uh, some some sort of contribution from you which was unique in some manner and then it was uh, you were able to solve that problem and uh, lead to some measurable results so to be able to get that line of thought straight tight and in a manner which doesn't meander too far because uh, at the end of the day an interview is a conversation between two people 
um, and and if you are not uh, having a conversation in an engaging manner uh, you will lose your audience and that is never uh, helpful uh, because because an interview is a two way conversation so that has to stay on track so that's where when you get the call uh, practice that story out with with people who represent the panel as much as possible um so that you can you can uh, cut off the flab around your story um make it um make it something which which can fit in uh, as a response uh, an interactive response to a question that might come in the interview thank you manas and abhishek uh, so you touched upon uh, that the alums are the ones who are on the panel uh, and isb has now gone on only yeah. for alum only panels right so abhishek what are the top 3 things that you guys or isb looks for in the interview performance from the candidates uh, sure manan uh, i think uh, the top 3 things uh, that the panel looks for is uh, number 1 i think they want to validate the story in the essays uh you know a lot of times people claim a lot of things in the application and uh, you need to understand whether that's a cooked up story or a, or a real story that can be substantiated by you know examples and 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 uh, data points during the interview so that's number one i think number two uh, they they look for good communication skills because that's like a, a basic requirement for uh, you know a, a good successful mba uh, or or an alum and i think uh, that's what isb looks for you know uh, at isb i'm sure both of you would have also heard during your time that isb believes that you are a student for a year but you are an alum for life and eventually the end goal is to you know hold the flag high once you graduate from isb so if you do not come across as somebody who can become a successful alum then it becomes difficult and and you know to uh, to be successful in any field i believe communication is very very important so that's another point and thirdly i think uh, leadership is something that they look for you might have worked only for two years like in the case of ylp mm. or early entry option uh, but if you have showcased or demonstrated leadership abilities in college you know organizing your cultural fest or leading a club or anything that showcases your Uh, initiative and your entrepreneurial spirit and and your leadership abilities which i think is very valuable so uh, when i was on the panel uh, in january this year uh, you know and you know behind the scenes you know in between interviews when we are looking at the application uh, we we tend to you know whether it is said or unsaid we tend to look at these things you know uh, when we are looking at the next next candidates application we see okay he's mentioned this Uh, in his essay so let's talk about this you know he's talked about leading a team he's talked about a new product idea or something so let's let's talk about this so that you know we are able to validate those stories so that's what i would say you know are the top 3 things that the um, the panel is looking for thank you abhishek uh, so uh, the questions are pouring in and a few questions we also got from the registration so one thing that people are right now worried about is earlier all the interviews used to happen in person and there is a different vibe that you can create and now everything is online um, sometimes video in most cases and in some cases couple of alums might not have their video on a few of them might have so what do you think is the difference between the two and how should the candidates minimize the difference and still be able to make an impact so manas what are your thoughts on that so i think this this is the challenge that has actually been posed to the entire uh, uh, corporate setup uh, right now uh, because physical meetings are are something which are now on their way out at least uh, in in the short term um so uh, the, that that challenge obviously culminates here as well but i would also say that this challenge had been there with regard to mba admissions uh, say when you are when you are interviewing with the admissions committee uh, outside of india for a college outside of india they could also be be doing something like that so it's not an experiment that is completely new and hasn't been done before in the in the field of mba admissions that has happened before of course for isb it becomes unique because most of the candidates uh, usually uh, interview in person and now that that cannot happen uh, to create uh, an environment i think that uh, uh, that that feel to create that feel as you're using that word um, 
you have to make sure that that you create as much of an environment of a physical meeting as possible um so you have to make sure that uh, you are appropriately dressed for the occasion uh, you are are uh, preparing in the same manner you have your documents with you because again that just brings in that feel you have something to note down uh, pointers with um and uh, and when you have this call you have an environment which is quiet where you can actually do this and also please ensure of course that you have appropriate uh, bandwidth on the internet uh, so those basics uh, remain pretty much the same to make sure that you are able to do this and before you actually walk into the interview make sure you test out all of these things and ensure that these environments are created and there is no digression so that obviously there would be something that gets taken away as compared to a physical meeting uh, in person but you are your whatever gets taken away is minimized and and you are able to focus on the process of the conversation um, instead of having to worry about these these uh, technical issues other than that i think if you are able to do this uh, uh, and and practice this out often enough i mean i know for a fact that i would prefer a physical meeting over 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 a call any day but this is a reality that we are facing so with practice and the the lockdown and everything has lasted long enough for me to have now come to a stage where i'm actually comfortable with it um so uh, do not let any of the communication skills that abhishek mentioned uh, be taken away from your conversation so um that that uh, uh, those those subliminals those no, those non verbals uh, your hands coming into the picture your gestures your body language your dressing sense all of that comes into the picture Uh, so don't let that be taken away whatever you can control make sure that is at least up to mark and again the more you practice the more you will be more com- more comfortable with this format and then i think that that shouldn't uh, be a very unique problem for you to be able to solve thank you vanus uh so a couple of questions from the chat uh one is i haven't got my interview invite yet for r1 on what pattern is isb sending out invites this year uh, so it is a, a perennial question from everybody uh, i can't pinpoint on a pattern as such all i can say is that isb is a overworked in some sense because the number of applications have been slightly higher this year plus the efficiency has sort of gone down because everybody is working remotely uh, which manas pointed out earlier so there is slightly a lag between verification and then the interview calls the second bit is the process as i said earlier is longer so you should not lose hope till the time you get a rejection mail and you know if if you look back at my interview experience i had given up and then i still got a call afterwards where isb added another day of interviewing for for delhi and you can read about that and do that later so what i'm trying to say is don't lose hope until then uh in terms of uh, the interview invites uh this week for example there was nothing because of the holiday we should be having mm-hmm. interviews at least for the next 3 weeks uh for for uh, round 1 although isb has said that november 10th or november 15th is when the results will start to come out but i am expecting maybe a week lag in terms of that but the results should start to come out that way again original question no pattern as such they are you know verifying applications looking at uh, your profile with respect to the pool that has come in already or they might want to wait and get a view once everybody submits their scores so rest assured your application will be viewed it will be validated like it has been the case throughout the previous years as well and then only you will get an invite till then make sure your preparation is up to the mark in some cases people have got interview invites within 3 days as of notice as well so make sure you are prepared and you start to do your mocks as soon as you got get your invites uh the other question uh, is can we expect a technical question in the interview uh, hitesh i believe you mean uh, respected about your uh, subject matter expertise or the industry that you're coming from so abhishek what are your thoughts on that uh sure manan i think uh, candidates can definitely expect a technical question if one of the panelists happen to be from the same domain uh i'll give an example when i was on the panel earlier this year uh, we had someone from uh, 
uh, Samsung, and you know he was a product manager and or or you know in the product team, and uh, he was talking about what features have been added to Samsung phones, and you know uh, which ones were his initiative or his ideas, etc. And uh, one of my co-panelists was from the same domain and he really went deeper into it you know how did you decide what did you do how did you prioritize uh, the the uh, you know the features or uh, you know so on and so forth so you can definitely expect technical questions and that's why uh, coming back to my initial point on being very very thorough on what you have written in your cv and your application if you are saying that you have done something it, and it that is uh, technical in nature then you have to be thorough with that and i think that's actually where uh, you can swing it in your favor you know a lot of people can claim a lot of things in their application and many a times you know they just claim because uh, say it's a buzzword like ai or ml or uh, you know it's something that they believe that you know because i come from the same field i can talk about it and maybe uh, you know it's a b school interview so people will restrict themselves to business business and not on the technical stuff but the truth is that if you meet somebody who comes from the same domain as you he can really grill you on those technicalities so make sure that you are very very thorough with each and every point in your cv as well as your application if they are technical then so be it make sure that you have read up make sure that you know the latest in that particular domain uh, and and definitely you know some you have the adequate knowledge to have a meaningful conversation with someone from the same field so uh, yes you can uh, definitely expect those questions and i think you should be well prepared and this is something you can do before you even get the call uh, so that you know on the d day you are going in with requisite knowledge and information and and you can have a, a meaningful conversation Uh, Manan, you, just, just one more point I wanted to add uh, to the previous question, uh, but, but we jumped to the question from the chat window, uh, which was on, on virtual interviews this year. See, my take on this is slightly different. I think it's a big positive for everybody interviewing because you are so used to it in the last six months. All your, uh, you know, all your business meetings are now happening virtually, right? So you are practically speaking to people uh, you know on video or through your teams or skype or zooms uh, maybe 3 to 4 hours a day and and that's the mode isb is following imagine if it was physical you you might be stuttering or you might not be as confident because you are not used to meeting people these days right so i think it's a big plus uh, secondly i i think uh, it's it's easier you know because uh, uh, you know if you have three people sitting in front of you and you are the only one on the other side of the table you at times feel smaller or, or you know something of that sort and there are always the butterflies because it's it's the isb interview and you know this is what matters and all of that but you know because you're so used to uh, looking at your screen and talking i think you can actually turn it to your advantage and and take it like just any other uh, call or meeting that you uh, that you hold every day right so that's what i would say don't don't be uh, you know under this impression that people are judging me or anything you know have have your glass of water besides you have your notepad and pen as manas mentioned and actually make it a positive experience you know smile uh, you know be comfortable in your chair and all of that i think that's that's actually a positive the way i look at it this year rather than a negative because how many times do you actually you know uh, uh, in your day to day life uh, go and speak with three people on the other side of the table and you are the only one here and, and they will then you know grill you on on questions about what you've done in the past right this time it's it's actually a, a lot more advantageous you know you can even speak with your friends or alums or mba consultant whosoever in the same format right and actually get very very used to the format before the d day Abhishek, you have clearly adjusted more to this environment than I have. <laughs> uh, so, but yeah, honestly, fair point. I, I would, I, I would also prefer a face-to-face -face meeting any day over a virtual one. But given the times, I think if you look at it positively, I think you, you are actually a lot better prepared for the D-Day than what we were. I mean. Uh, you know and in, in our times there used to be physical interviews and you know that was the case even until last year but this year imagine hmm. that you know if they were physical 
and you are not used to meeting people it would have been much more difficult to adapt than the the setting that you are in right now so that's what i would say yeah i think the only difference is you'll have to be dressed up versus the meetings that you take in your uh, uh, you can still be in your clothes. pajamas yes. <laughs> you can still be in your pajamas right. and, uh, yeah. but have a suit and tie on <laughs> right okay um uh, another question is from shubham uh, what points can be told to defend the shift to the consulting uh, industry uh, i'm assuming shubham you're talking about post isb consulting and manas i think you were from broadly an investment banking background and then you moved over to consulting so uh, what was your answer to this question uh so actually interestingly in my case this this conversation came up more uh, uh, towards my long term career goal where i had mentioned that i would eventually want to uh, shift into an industry but that's maybe uh, a different conversation and for another day uh, but specifically in this case it's 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 a difficult question to answer in the sense that unless uh, a proper background is built up uh, this question is not that simple uh, for the reason that there are a lot of people who have a similar aspiration coming into isb uh, so that's almost a straight jacket uh, response that that the panel is used to and and if let's say i am a panelist and i am interviewing 10 people in a day uh, more likely than not eight of them would have this sort of an aspiration that they would want to go into uh, not just consulting but strategic consulting and that to uh, some of the known names uh, in in that field so that would require some sort of an explanation in terms of what you have done so far um, and and the fact that you have a level of expertise in that field so that when you go into um, uh, management consulting or strategic consulting you have that expertise that you can bring in and where isb then steps in and this this response actually brings in the aspect of why isb also or why mba also very nicely into the picture because that is where you can talk about an expertise that you have in a certain field and then you would want to grow that further and broaden the impact that you may want to make in in a corporate environment and that's usually the answer that you would receive um of course the and and abhishek mentioned this uh, that that the story should not come across as something which is uh, which has just been picked up and has been put on the table as as a standard template and that is where the the devil is in the detail in this case so how how uh, nuanced is your response and those are the level of finishings that you get with more conversations with with uh, with the with the more simulated environment and and the more you talk in those environments the more you get to know about certain nuances that can get picked up and you should have that finished in terms of your response instead of getting cornered into something that you didn't think through so that is where uh, if if there is a case like this where you are moving from a particular field to another one and and you want a, a finished story uh, the idea of having these practice conversations becomes even more important um, uh, and and having it with the right kind of people is also quite important um, as i said as as perfect a simulation as possible so that these conversations can bring out these elements which can corner you potentially when you are when you are presenting these responses yeah i'm uh, just to add uh, i think there is a lot uh, of preparation and pre work required before practicing as well because this is a goal that you see 18 months mm. from now you're we're sitting in october and november and assuming you yeah. graduate by uh, june 2022 essentially you have you should be having the ability to look and feel and touch the goal that you want to do and mm. also point out what are the gaps in your current profile to reach that goal and how isb or any v school will uh, you know bridge that gap so essentially so, demonstrate your research is that, very important that you spoke spoke to yeah. alums and other things right so that's that's actually an interesting point manan and um, and and to add uh, to build on to that as well is that uh, when i was i was giving this response there is a certain assumption that i have made that this this uh, straight lining of the story has happened as part of your application process which then made me also think as you were speaking about this that it's also critical that that you know your story that you've written well uh, because during these these questionings and these cornering sessions it's quite easy to digress 
from uh, from from that that story that you have presented already and if there is any inconsistency that comes out between what you have written in your application and what you are saying at that point in time because obviously this question is there in the application you have to have some sort of an explanation in terms of why you want to go into consulting uh, as you talk about your long term and short term goals and if that is not ironed out uh, or or if you land up saying something which is not consistent with what you've written in your application that could lead to uh, some inconvenient conversations so again ironing that out prior to the interview um, is is a critical step thanks manas uh so uh, abhishek uh, what all documents or what all information about the candidates uh, do the alum panelists have uh, at the interviews you know i've heard uh, gmat scores are not there some people say essays are not there exactly so why didn't you break that myth now <clears throat> Uh, so you were right and wrong, Manan. Uh, you were right that uh, the GMAT slash GRE score is not there, uh, but you were not right when you said that the essays are not there. So you get the application which has the essays, etc., but you do not get the GMAT GRE score because uh, the school doesn't want any bias to come in. You know, uh, because mm -hmm. if you know that the guy who's gonna come in next has a 780 versus the guy that you just met and he had a 680 you might have a bias for the, the the guy with the higher score so i think that's the reason behind not sharing the gmat or gre score with the panel but i think apart from that you have all the detail which gives you enough opportunity to uh, understand what are the areas where you would want to know further about the candidate and you know talk specifically about uh, those experiences or those decisions that they've taken and how that connects to uh, you know their story and and their motivation for an mba and and how isb would fit into that so i think that's uh, what uh, you get so you so you get a copy of of the application without the score and uh, everybody gets a copy like for the entire uh, panel whether it's two people three sometimes there are four people but that's not usual uh, and and you have all that information and and you are supposed to at least go through that once before the interview begins now that's questionable sometimes people will just uh, glance or or flip very quickly some people will go into greater detail but yeah everybody does have a copy of what you have mentioned in your application um okay. manan if i may uh, i am also yeah. curious about whoever raised this question what was the thought process behind behind posing this question uh, because to clarify uh, it shouldn't matter what the panel has is in in their hand so it's not as if you can in any way circumvent anything by knowing that oh they may not have this particular document don't do that keep your stories consistent i am assuming that that was not the intent of the question i hope it certainly wasn't Uh, but don't do that because at the end of the day, the admissions committee sits down with all the feedback uh, from interviews and the rest of your application, as well as your recommendation letters, and draws out a consistent line. So try not to uh, circumvent anything. Uh, keep your story straight, straight as if the person that you're speaking with has all the information that could possibly be there uh, in your application. Just to put that to rest. Yeah. see as as future alums i think there are a lot more curious and you know the alum community is curious about <laughs> yeah. things so maybe that's the question okay uh vinamra has asked is asking that if somebody and it's specific to him as well if somebody has mentioned entrepreneurship or starting your own venture as a long term goal uh and hmm. you already have not thought about whether you know this will be a venture a b whichever field that is what should be the response to that question um manas sure so that that actually is a uh, is another popular uh, long term goal that that people have and why not i mean we have um, a world today where startups are a possibility and uh, and a lot of people actually uh, take up an mba to actualize that goal so by all means uh, but but that obviously has its own challenges in the sense that uh, uh, that you may not have that thought process structured as yet enough to to have a very detailed conversation around this so that challenge does remain um but what and and of course the the alums also understand this if if i receive an application where something like this is given i understand that long term means something which is in the distant future and not something you are immediately uh, going to achieve um so what what the alum uh, uh, 
panel would be interested in is more towards how you plan to get there. Uh, what is it about the about the activity of entrepreneurship that ex is is uh, is exciting to you? Why do you want to go there? Um, how do you plan to tackle the challenges that something like this would throw at you? So you may not have have the exact product or service structure that you want to uh, throw at the market, especially in the long term case. If you're doing this in the short term case, that's a different conversation. There you need to have some sort of a structure around what is it that you're talking about and be prepared to receive some punches around your business model. Because of course, these are people who have seen businesses uh, work and fail and, and done it themselves as well, probably. Um, so therefore expect that. But if it is a long term goal that you have, then it's fine to not have a very structured response around exactly what you have in mind. But having clarity on how you plan to get there, the typical challenges that entrepreneurial entrepreneurship presents, how do you plan to overcome them? Uh, what do you plan to do as you get there so that you are capable of, of doing what you, what you uh, plan to do? And having some idea about what sort of an activity or problem this might try to solve. How exactly might still be a different conversation, but this last point would be helpful uh, to, to bring that out. Even if it's not there, it's not a deal breaker, but have some sort of a thought process around what kind of a field would that be? And that's that's all right. I think that somewhere is also true for any long-term goal that you might have and more so for entrepreneurship because naturally entrepreneurship would be a unique solution that you will bring to the market and therefore be able to sell that. Right. And in any case, whether it's entrepreneurship or any other goal, yeah. your short term goal should be a stepping stone towards that long term goal. So you can have two short term goals, plan A and plan B, mm. but both these plans should lead up to whatever long term goal you have. If it's entrepreneurship, do defend the fact that how will your short term goal prepare you for entrepreneurship, even if it's not even uh, you know a, a, a fleshed out version of what you ex exactly want to do. Okay. Yeah, that, that, uh, that story has to be ironed out. What you've done so far, MBA, short term, long term. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Abhishek, uh, one question also has come in that are the interviewers dif interviews different for people who have, say, 10 plus years of experience versus who are relatively younger in their career, maybe three to five years or maybe lesser? So is there a difference in terms of the kind of questions the panel would ask them? So I think uh, overall the panel is looking for the same traits that we discussed earlier in the session. Uh, and if you happen to have more years of experience than less, it doesn't really change a lot of things. Yes, there might be more questions on, say for example, if, if you come with say 10 years of WorkEx and you are leading a team in your current role, they will still be looking for validation of that leadership through your current experience and not talk about what you did in your college fest, you know, organizing your college fest 10 years ago. But for a YLP or an early entry option, uh, you know, they will still be looking at leadership through a different route, which is, you know, uh, what did you do when you organize your college fest? So that's the only difference I would say. But I think a, a lot of candidates uh, these days, you know, whom I've spoken to, whom I've mentored, uh, have this question that, uh, I have only two years of experience or I have 10 years of experience, you know, uh, will this be a challenge? See, the truth is that ISB uh, welcomes people from all walks of life and all uh, levels of experience, you know, equally. They, they are just looking at the most suitable candidates for a diverse class. And, and I think it's very important to be able to demonstrate what you're going to do and, and also be able to validate your story as i mentioned before so it doesn't really matter whether you come with 10 years or two years or whatever that number is what matters is are you able to validate what you have mentioned in your application are you able to demonstrate that you will be a value additive addition to the class uh, uh, at isp and if you are able to check those boxes then it doesn't matter whether it's two years or 10 years thanks abhishek okay uh Another question that has come in is very interesting one. Uh, how do you cope up with the pressure of making yourself stand out in the interview? Uh, what would you indicate is engaging enough for the interviewers among the multiple interviews that they have to conduct? Uh, and especially now, when everything is online, people are 
quote and quote uh, you know stressed out also and back to back video calls effectively that they'll have to go for so how do you think we should for the candidate mm. should stand out so manas okay uh so it's it's a difficult question in the sense that wanting to stand out uh makes you not stand out it's it's almost a, um uh, you know an ir- ironical question that how do i stand out because if you try doing that it it shows and that doesn't make for a good conversation you know i always always say that at the end of the day uh, an interview if you sort of break it down is interview so it's like two parties exchanging their views on something and and the panelist uh, probably other than the application knows as little about you as as you know about him or her so how do you ensure an engaging conversation uh, so that is always a challenge um, but but let's think about what what makes a good engaging conversation in general um, if if there is good communication as abhishek said and communication doesn't mean being able to speak well only communication also means being able to listen well being able to express well and have the right kind of non verbals going with that uh, that kind of communication so first of all the idea is that that package has to be there and you should be able to make the other person understand and be able to understand what the other person is trying to tell you so that two way is is the very first basic that you need for a good engaging conversation the second is a certain level of trust in terms of what is being said is accurate is is consistent um, isn't going everywhere and and given that this is a this is a time bound conversation it it is able to uh, uh, present what needs to be presented within those time bounds and and doesn't take take too long to to go around and and before you get to the point so the the, the basics of what makes a good conversation remains the same whether it is an interview uh, or otherwise and again as abhishek said that the idea of having uh, um, a virtual conversation might just work in your favor i might think differently but that's just me um but but anyway uh, so however wherever you are on this spectrum from from manas to abhishek in terms of your comfort with virtual conversations the basics of of a good conversation don't change and uh, and if you are able to understand what the other person is asking and present it in a manner that the other person is able to absorb it i think that would make a good engaging conversation and you would automatically stand out one key thing here um, is what i alluded to previously as well that that level of trust has to be a short period of time so make sure that there are no inconsistencies in what you are saying and what is available to the panelist uh, because that doesn't make a, a good conversation and uh, and and you are able to back up what you are saying with with facts and you don't have to uh, cook up too many things as you are having this conversation and it comes through again we are all uh, accustomed to having conversations and and you might not be interview panelists but uh, not all of you would be uh, but you sh- you are able to easily uh, conclude whether a person is being open and truthful in that conversation or not so if you are able to do that uh, that automatically makes for a good engaging conversation and you are sitting there so obviously there is something in the interesting in your application and that's why you are there so don't uh, take that away from yourself uh, give yourself that much credit that that you are there so there is something interesting be open have that communication have that conversation and i think uh, that obviously comes through practice but the more you do it the more comfortable you will get and more confident you will get about this thanks manas uh, i think which which leads me to another uh, question that came in uh, how do you answer the introduce yourself question uh, to my mind what i feel is whatever you said is absolutely fine uh and make sense i think the tone of the interview is set right from that answer itself if you are giving certain snippets uh, which are interesting enough which the alums will then ask about it could be a incident from the childhood it could be your experience in terms of whatever you did at work etc etc and then you obviously have an answer prepared for that because you have practiced and then they'll ask that question you will answer and then basically to me that is basically you know driving the interview in some sense and that sort of sets the tone and to to your point it is a conversation at the end of the day it is not an interrogation that uh, exactly. the alums are doing so uh, it is a two way street and uh, there is something good in you that you are sitting there be confident and uh, and and take it head on in some sense right okay uh, uh, 
manan yeah. one one uh, funny thing that i i recall uh, is that someone who i was speaking with with regard to interviews and this person is a bit of an expert mentioned that if at the beginning of the interview you or whoever is the panelist poses the question introduce yourself or tell me something about yourself that's a lazy way to start an interview i i have been guilty myself i've done it so often but that information is already available to the person so if that is the opening question then that's a lazy way to start but not to say that that is not the most typical question that you get so absolutely right man and that somewhere sets the tone of the interview correct correct okay um there is a question about wild piece now uh, abhishek you've been taking wild piece interviews this year so uh, what do you look for uh, in a wild piece interview and you mentioned about you know somebody with lesser experience and 10 plus years of experience so wild piece is a totally different way of entering into isb so what would you look for in a wild piece applicant uh so manan as i said the basic uh, qualities that isb looks for remain the same whether it's a wild piece candidate or somebody with even 20 years of experience uh how you judge those experiences or or how you uh, validate those experiences uh, changes with the uh, mode of entry whether it's wild piece or early entry or or the normal pgp entry uh i think with wild piece because they are still uh, you know in college or just out of college uh, you do not have any experience but you do have some internships where you can talk about what they did and what they achieved but i think there's a lot of emphasis on uh, what they did outside of academics you know during their college life because that gives you an insight into who they are as a person and i think that's very important especially in the isb interview may not be uh, as relevant in an im interview but i think isb wants to understand you as a person and not just you as a professional so make sure that you are bringing in that element of uh, you know that personal story or or that personality uh, which will help you demonstrate the key traits that you'll bring to the class so specifically you know when it comes to wild piece there are a lot of candidates who come in with uh, you know a, a a college committee kind of an experience or a leadership position or position of responsibility during college all their own initiative uh, a lot of people actually do uh, some kind of a small time startup while in college just to get a feel of running a business or you know uh, understanding how it all works in in this digital age uh, a lot of people these days have social media channels that 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 they running part time uh, you know just to get some uh, traction on uh, on youtube or instagram etc uh, there are people who volunteer as well uh, but you know whether it is uh, volunteering or entrepreneurship even though it is part time or college fest or whatever it is Uh, the idea is to understand who you are what you bring to the table will you be an addition of a you know a value additive uh, member to the class at isb and and that is what matters so it doesn't really matter too much whether you know you have experience or not as i said but whatever you have done and whatever you mentioned in your application make sure that you are able to back it up like you know one of the wild piece interviews i was taking recently uh, you know uh, that person had mentioned that she had uh, worked with an ngo and went to the slums of delhi uh, to talk about uh, or create awareness about uh, uh, you know menstrual problems uh, with women and you know how uh, they can be uh, they can be addressed and you know uh, how they had distributed free, free sanitary pads etc now so i i actually went very deep into the story because i wanted to understand that better you know who organized it which was the ngo how did she get in touch uh, how did she uh, uh, you know uh, come up with the list of colonies that they had to target what was the experience what was the uh, you know response that they got from those uh, women whom they were addressing so that's very important you know whatever you are mentioning even it it may be the slightest of bullets on your cv and you you may be believe ha ye to maine aise hi likh diya hai for extra curricular or just to showcase a different light but the truth is that any and every word matters and you know uh, whatever is is the most interesting bit or at times it may be the least interesting bit according to you but may be very interesting for the panel uh, they may ask you questions on that so make sure that you are very very thorough with your story both in the application and and your bullets on the cv because anything and everything can be uh, asked in greater detail and if if that is not being uh, validated 
then you are not able to stand out you know just to answer the, that previous question like manas mentioned you know just be yourself and 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 be very positive about it don't try to impress the the panel unnecessarily uh and make sure that whatever mm-hmm. detail is being asked you are able to substantiate that if you are able to substantiate that i think you you definitely stand out so you don't have to do anything above and beyond that just just do your homework well and i think you should be fine right uh thanks abhishek so uh, there is a question with respect to reapplicants uh, so rohit asks that if you were if, they, if he was there in the interview last year and they asked about why is it the right time to go for an mba one year has passed uh so is it still the right time you know how you should answer that question because the right time has shifted by a year in some sense right okay uh so i think uh you have to understand that you are taking you are making a career move okay uh, an mba is not a short term expense it's a long term investment in your career and your career is going to span for most people at least a th- you know 30 years from today right uh, so if you are making an investment whether it came last year or this year or it comes next year i don't think it matters much because in the larger scheme of things it's still going to make a big difference in your you know how your career pans out from there on so you know if you are talking about the right time i think uh, trends change or mega trends change in decades okay for example what we have seen in terms of social media and digital age uh, 10 years ago nobody was talking about ai ml our social media as much as we do today right people were not spending so much time on their smartphones 10 years ago smart smartphones had just come in 10 years ago right so mega trends shift in 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 about a decade and therefore if you are making a longer term investment in light of some mega trends then it's okay whether it's one year here or there so to answer that question i think it doesn't matter much and people do not really ask that question in my view they are more interested in the the larger themes of who you are why are you going for an mba mm-hmm. how will that help your career what will you do post mba how will you contribute to the class those are bigger questions than were you you know would you rather be in class of 2020 or 21 or 22 i don't think that matters and especially at a place like isb where you have such a diverse cohort it doesn't matter whether you have 5 years or 6 years or 7 years of experience it I, to me it doesn't matter what you contribute to the class matters much more and and that's why you know when i was at isb there were some yilp guys i have the highest regards for them you know they contributed to the class much more than some of the senior executives in the class so to me it's just a number it doesn't matter whether it's one year here or there thanks abhishek uh we'll take uh, one more question before we wrap up uh, so uh, manas one part or, or for all isb interviews is what do you want to know from us as the panel so what and then there are varied answers uh, or varied type of questions that come up you know people research people talk to alums what is that right question to ask so if you are sitting there uh, receiving that question yeah. what would be a good question that you yes. would want to hear a good question would be one that i genuinely want to know the answer to and i haven't been able to figure it out so the 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 good question will be obviously the expectation is that you would have done your research you would have spoken to to certain alums you would have had those conversations so at the end of the day if you genuinely have a question that you did not find an answer to you should ideally uh, and if you do uh then that is the question you should you should put forth what is the right question in the sir in in the sense that uh, if you want a statement with the question mark at the end and that is the right question that doesn't exist uh and and even if i i let it out on a public forum then everybody will go ahead and ask that question that anyway uh, makes it suspect uh but the point is that do your research be sure of what the information that is available has been absorbed by you and then what remains makes a good question which you genuinely want to know and i'm sure there would be questions i don't think everybody fully understands the manner in which uh, i mean i didn't uh, the manner in which isb would uh, would decide on so many things let's say subjects would i miss out on subjects if if i don't have the right kind of points first of all what are these bidding points how are they allocated 
what do i do with them what all can i not do with them so all of those aspects were were a few questions that 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 can be asked uh, if if i were there when i would have posed these questions uh, because these were genuinely things that i wanted to do so the right thing is i i go back to the same point if you want to have a genuine conversation if you're asking a fake rehearsed practiced question that will come out so don't do that have a question that you genuinely want to ask and if you don't have that question continue prodding away continue doing your research till you actually come to a question where you genuinely want to know something from the panel Abhishek, you want to add something to that? Yeah, I'll just add by saying that uh, you know, ask a question which will have an impact on your experience while you are at the school. You know, some people like during the mock interviews I took recently, somebody asked me, "Okay, how was your experience at ISB?" It doesn't matter. I mean, how will Abhishek's experience at ISB matter to a candidate today? You know, so many so many years down the line. it doesn't matter you know whether abhishek or manas or manan and everybody would have their own experience because they are a part of a larger class but it's important to ask a question which will have a direct bearing on your experience okay and therefore and and it's important that you ask the question because that's the only chance that isb is giving you to you know understand uh, the program or, or the life at isb better okay so don't let that chance go and ask a question which will have a direct bearing and especially this year you know there are a lot of unknowns so make sure that you are asking a valid question something that you cannot uh, understand just by reading information on a forum or you know elsewhere on the internet so you know make that count ask that question but make sure it is something that will truly have a direct impact or direct bearing on your experience if you happen to go to isb so that's what i would say thank you abhishek uh, so uh, thank you for the engaging conversation uh, both of you any closing comments manas uh i think this 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 pretty much covered uh, what what uh, i could have thought of as an introductory session to interviews uh, one point that i felt somewhere uh, because of the manner in which the discussions panned out uh, got left out was with regard to uh, failures that someone might have and that is also uh, an an important aspect probably something that you can think about uh, that shows professional maturity that you failed and and managed to bounce back uh, so that is also one aspect that that i just wanted to add uh, probably a conversation in in detail and a case by case basis but other than that uh, i i reiterate the basics of a conversation don't change uh, have an engaging conversation and at the end of it you would know whether your interview went well or not because uh, a conversation is never one way so uh, if it, it it usually doesn't happen that one person walks away thinking that that was a great conversation and the other person walks away thinking that this was uh, completely um, down the dumps so uh, so you would know the manner in which the conversation went by which also indicates that the basics of conversations don't change have those the only difference is that these are time bound conversations uh, and that is where you need practice uh, and to be more specific and have a tight straight ironed out story So that's all. Those are my signing off remarks. Thank you, Manas. Uh, Abhishek, your thoughts? Uh, so I'll just say, uh, guys, just be yourself. I think Manas also mentioned this uh, during the conversation. You know, don't try to fake it until you make it. That doesn't work. Uh, and um, I would, I would just leave you with one last thought, which I tell you know most people who you know <laughs> practice uh, interviews with me. Uh, please take all your mocks like the real isb interview and take the real isb interview like just another mock and this year with everything happening online you are as close to the real setup in a mock as you would be so uh, make sure that you are not you know uh, having unnecessary or undue pressure on yourself uh, just because you know it's the isb interview it doesn't matter if it doesn't happen this year it may happen next year it's okay you know we have seen candidates who made it to isb in their second third or even fourth attempts so that's fine it's not the end of the world so go in confident prepare well but you know on the d day just take it like just another mock and and be calm and composed and and i'm sure that you'll do well so thank you so much abhishek and manas uh, for the listeners in case you uh, need to know more about the interview process or you need help with interview preparation or mock interviews 
you can reach out to us uh, on info at strategy for gmail.com or you can visit the website uh, i just posted a link as well uh, to know more about the services and what we offer uh, till then happy preparing uh, the fact that you have taken a decision to go for an mba is a big enough decision and congratulations on that first of all because it is an important stepping stone towards your long term goals uh, if you have got a call then you are all the more confident to uh, you know do well you have been selected out of a large pool of great candidates so all the best for that and uh, let us know in case you need any help uh, thank you so much for your time today and uh, have a good rest of the evening and the weekend thank you bye guys thanks everyone bye bye